This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Trumpeter's F106 Delta Dart, Tacom's Mark IV, and Osmod's Pilatus PC9. We also check out new kits at the annual iHobby Show in Schaumburg, Illinois. Hi, and welcome to another edition of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown. I'm Tim Kidwell. I'm Aaron Skinner. Let's get started today with Trumpeter's latest Cold Warrior, a 148 scale F106A. Convair's Delta Dart was the last dedicated interceptor used by the U.S. Air Force. Developed from the F-102, the Mark II capable fighter was designed to counter incoming Soviet bombers. It was liked by the pilots who flew it, uh, and the USAF and Air National Guard units used it for 30 years. Since the early 80s, the only way to get a 48 scale F-106 was Monogram's kit, later reissued by Ravel. Now that's not a bad kit, but Trumpeter shows us what 30 years of molding and design technology can do for you. The medium gray parts reveal the sharp engraved panel lines and fine rivets the Chinese manufacturer is known for these days. The 6 is a big airplane in 148th scale, almost 18 inches long, and there's a lot of parts in the box. The detailed cockpit includes a good representation of a Weber ejection seat with photo etched metal belts. The side consoles and instrument panel feature molded detail that will look great either painted or decaled. Interior detail extends to the gear wells and weapon bay which feature molded equipment and wiring. There's a long jet pipe, but the intakes end about an inch and a half inside with a blanking plate. They're narrow enough that careful painting should give the illusion of depth. The elevons are separate. Locators put them in the slight droop often seen on the aircraft when parked. It should be easy to modify them to other angles. The rudder is also separate. The speed brakes at the base of the tail are designed to be posed open as is the ram air turbine in the belly. Speaking of the belly, the Dart's big weapons bay can be posed open, revealing a Genie nuclear air-to-air -air missile and four Falcon missiles, a pair each of the radar homing and infrared tracking AIM-4s. The Falcons can apparently be posed on the extended launch brackets. If you want to model the sleek Delta clean, Trumpeter provides a separate part for the doors. There are tanks for the wings. The canopy is the later blown style without the upper frame that was installed as part of Project Six Shooter. The same program saw the Genie missile replaced with the provision for an M61 Vulcan cannon. Decals provide markings for two Air National Guard F-106s from the 1970s, one from New Jersey, the other Florida. Both are appropriate for the canopy provided. Now assembly will prove if this is an easier build than Monogram's kit, but it looks great in the box and should be very popular with Century Series fans. Next up is the latest in the ever-expanding World War I kit market. It is Tacom's 135th scale Mark IV. Yeah, we're going to look today at the female. We actually got samples of both genders, but the male is already out for review. The kits, like the real things, were similar, the main differences being the armament. That's right, the female mounted just machine guns as opposed to the males, which were armed with six-pounders. This means that the female's sponsons were smaller. If you're unfamiliar with the Mark IV, it was developed from the Mark I, the first ever tank. More than 1,200 of the Mark IVs were built from 1917 onward, and they saw combat on the Western Front as well as after the war. Given that Tamiya recently released a 135th scale Mark IV, comparisons are inevitable. Tacom's kit is not motorized, so some of the compromises Tamiya introduced are not present. For example, Tamiya's hull, the outer section that the track runs around, is broken down to allow access to the motor. Tacom has those sections molded in single pieces. That should eliminate alignment issues. Beautifully molded, those parts show precise panel lines and distinctive rivets and bolts. The central structure is a box made up from several flat parts, again beautifully molded. Like Tamiya, Tacom provides separate hatches, including the driver's visors. There isn't much interior, but Tacom has beautifully detailed guns, including the mount, butt, breech, and magazine, as well as the hatches in the sponsons. They also provide the running gear, including sprockets and chains, from the engine to the drive sprockets. The running gear takes up a lot of the parts. There are 54 road wheels of two different styles, each comprised of three parts. And 184 track links, each made up of five parts. Add 30 grousers and you have your work cut out. But the detail and accuracy of the parts is outstanding. The kit includes an unditching beam with real chain. The instructions show the option of posing the beam stowed on top or deployed attached to the tracks. A small photo etched metal fret includes some detail parts and straps. There's a single figure of a German photographer 
complete with the pickle haube helmet and bellows camera. Decals provide markings for Flirt 2, which fought at Cambrai in 1917 and is now on display at a museum in Lincoln, England. The other option is Anchen, a colorful camouflage tank captured by the Germans and pressed into service. We've said it before and we'll say it again. Fans of World War I models are living through the golden era and to comms Mark IVs, they rock. Definitely. Now let's head to iHobby and see what's new. Let's do it. MMD Squadron had this new ship kit from Meng in 1 1 50th scale, the steamer Taiping from the new John Woo movie The Crossing. This is molded in color, snap fit, and comes complete with a lighting set and some really terrific looking packaging. Meng also had this new T90 with the dozer blade. Some beautifully molded parts in this kit and a nice surprise is an LED lighting set for the dazzlers on the turret. Individual link tracks and a beautifully illustrated instruction manual with three color options round out the package. Edward had this limited edition Czech Squadrons MiG-21 kit which has color photo etch and parts for three complete MiGs. There's a historical manual with details of the aircraft and pilots and options for 32 different MiGs in the box. The hot item at Acrylicos Viejo was their Game Air range. These are fantasy colors designed to be used straight from the bottle through your airbrush. Great for figures and games. They also had a bunch of sets for figures, special effects, different camouflage schemes, vehicles. It's always good to see what they have on offer. Over at the MRC booth, Academy had their first car kit, a 124th scale Hyundai Azera. This comes pre-colored and snap fit, so you can do it with or without glue. There was also their latest Blackhawk, the 135th scale MH60S Seahawk version, the navalized version. Academy also has three new armor kits on the way, the M10, Tiger One, and M36. What you see in gray here are the new parts for these models. Gallery had their 1350th scale USS Intrepid. This is a great looking model, but we're not going to talk a whole lot about it here because you can look for a complete review in an upcoming issue of FSM. Over at round two, they had the model of Executive Officer Kane from the movie Alien. This looks great, all resin. The real surprise was a 1 1,000th scale Romulan Bird of Prey from the original Star Trek series. Mobius had their Batman figures, including a really neat looking Catwoman. Julie Newmar would be proud. We had Frank Fazetta's Death Dealer. And Tim and I were both amused to see Colonial One, the latest in the Battlestar Galactica line. They also had their 1 72nd scale Vipers and Raider. Iwata had a neat airbrush cleaning set which comes complete with several tools, including this nifty light for examining the needle and nozzle. They also had some airbrush weathering sets, including compressors. Good looking stuff, Aaron. Definitely. Now, a lot of readers will know I make no secret of the fact that I have a fondness for Australian subjects, so this next kit is of special interest. It's Osmod's 172nd scale PC9A. Developed by the Switzerland-based Pilatus firm in the early 1980s, uh, this single-engine turboprop trainer has been used by 16 countries. Including the Royal Australian Air Force, the largest single user, they have 67 of the aircraft they use as both a trainer and forward air controller. The RAAF's aerobatics team, the Roulettes, they also use it. Now this is the first kit in this scale from this Australian firm. Um, it's short run in nature, but it looks pretty good in the box. Molded in translucent white plastic, the 24 injection molded parts show fine surface engraved detail. Sprue attachment points are larger than mainstream kits, so take care when removing them. A razor saw may be the best option. There's also a little flash, but nothing a sharp blade and sanding can't get rid of. Optional blades allow the prop to be shown in cruise setting or feathered. The resin cockpit parts, tub, seats, instrument panel and control sticks are beautifully cast. Resin is also used for the nose wheel well and exhausts. The kit includes three canopies, one injection molded and two vacuum formed. Beautifully printed decals provide markings for the roulettes and a Royal Thai Air Force aerobatic plane. There are enough numbers on the sheet to do any of the aircraft from either display team. A nice color diagram shows painting directions and decal placement. Now Osmods makes it clear that this kit is for skilled builders. So if you've got a few short run kits under your belt, you can definitely give this one a whirl. Look for a review of this one, as well as the Tacom Mark IV and Trumpeter F-106 
in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see this and other new products in the November issue right here on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. I'm Tim Kidwell. We'll see you next time. Bye. Of World War One Mark Four. Try it again. <laughs>